Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for a board game type maze style game <laughs> in the game Mazescape by Devere. This one here is called Labyrinthos, and there are multiple different mazescapes available. And in the game, you are basically, well, what are you doing? You're escaping a maze. Yes, and there's multiple different types of mazes in the game that you'll start with. You'll go from one all the way to seven, and you'll be opening a little pamphlet, and you'll be utilizing a little pen or pencil or, or a little stick here and trying to follow a maze. And your objective is to... Escape. Yes, you need to get from one portion of the map to the other with some unique little twists and turns. It's pretty simple. I don't think there's a whole lot to discuss as far as setup and everything goes, but we'll, we'll, we'll go through it anyway. Okay, so how does the setup go? <laughs> you know? Can you tell me how to set, set the game up? It's just like that. Yeah, you, you just... open up the pamphlet and you start on the starting space. You choose the maze, you open it up one time, and then you take your pen or pencil or a little writing utensil that gives you one of these guys here, and you just set it on that little marker there. And uh, that's, that's how you set it up. All right, so playing the game is a little bit more complex, but well, not all that much more complex. Once you've taken your uh, writing utensil and placed it on the little compass space, your objective is to get to the triangle. And to do that, you're going to be moving around a maze. You're going to be moving through the paths, under bridges, over bridges. You're going to be climbing up stairs and ladders. You'll be uh, finding keys. You'll be finding teleporters. And you're going to try to get through it. And there are certain rules to how you can do that. Basically, you'll be able to open the pamphlet as long as your pencil is not on the current sheet you are utilizing. So as long as I have my little pen on the space, I can open this up like this. And I can also open this up like that. And then I can choose to move. And I can move down this thing here, following the, the pathway as it goes along. And just trying to reach that inner triangle. Um, and this you can fold in many different ways. And it doesn't have to be in the exact way that it starts folded. You can start changing the folds to try and uh, ease the path for yourself. So you can do this. And then you can take this and fold it in just like that. And you could take this and fold it in just like that. It doesn't really matter. There is, however, a way where you're going to go and reset it uh, up uh, to formulate how it's supposed to begin with. And it'll tell you that in the rule book. And also on the very back of the rules is going to be a little objective record sheet where every time you come across an objective, you can mark it down on this thing here. Uh, but it, after you complete one, you go to the next one and the next one, the next one, the next one. Now the first one is substantially easier and yes. they get substantially more difficult as you go through them with unique new difficulties that involve teleportation, how the boards are cut and folded and, uh, the different routes you're gonna to need to take in order to get through uh, the Labyrinthos module. There's a ton of other different options to play as far as Mazescape goes. And if you like mazes, this is one that you might be interested in, which we'll discuss uh, what we thought about it now. All right, so when I was a kid, uh, I used to, it was like second and third grade before I went into my elementary school, I had a private school, and I didn't have a lot of friends there. So what I would do to make friends is I had a big booklet and I would make mazes. And I would make mazes for them to solve. And the way I would do it is I'd have a booklet, it folds up like this. I would have on one side it go through and I'd have to, you'd have to flip over the page and then it follow up on the other side. They weren't as complex as these. These are a lot um, probably better than my second grade ability, but it had the same feel or similar feel where you're moving through pages. Um, what it would end up for me is dead ends, you know? So you wouldn't know, you'd have like three paths that you'd have to flip over the page to see if you made it. Because I always noticed that like, if you saw a head, you would not be, you would be less likely to use your pencil to go through it. So that's how I kind of pushed away from that you know, method, right? Where you're looking ahead and cheating. Uh, and this does that in a good way as well. This one, uh, you still can kind of look ahead and whatnot, but most of the time when you're looking ahead, because you can't move your pen or pencil off the space, you can kind of like look around and see what works best for you and try and find the right angle. But that's actually what you're supposed to be doing in the game. So you have that option to kind of move these until you see fit. But if you're on here, you're not gonna be able to move this, this page here. And so you're kind of limited as to your cheating methods uh, can go. Uh, so you can always look ahead, you can figure out where things are, but but in the end, you still have to keep your pen on the piece of paper and, of course, go through it. Now, you could cheat, I suppose, by just looking at the whole entire map 
and opening it up at the beginning and kind of memorizing them. But even still, it's going to be rather difficult to solve, even with all the information uh, that you might need in the game. Uh, it's progressively more difficult. The first one I completed very easily, and then I went to the second one, I got more challenging, and then I couldn't complete the third one. <laughs> That's how difficult these things get. Uh, when it says 5 to 90 minutes, it's because these guys range in difficulty ex ex exponentially. That's the word. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the first one was definitely a lot easier than the second one, and already going from one to two was a big jump. Yeah, uh, Callie had to assist on the second one here. She's more <laughs> of a mazer than we are, more of a puzzler. Um, and what's also interesting too is on the back of these guys here, it gives you objectives. Like this one here says you need a lighthouse, and it'll give you a point, and if you find the little key, or the little console I should say, there's treasure chests that you can find as you move along the maze, you can collect them. And then there's also how you get through, which is from the start to the finish. And progressively, there'll be new things. More additional chests, additional, like, clock towers you'll be finding. Uh, all the way up to maybe, like, I don't know, the fifth one here. Where you're going to have to find skulls and um, coffins and uh, getting a coin to the fountain. And eventually you'll come to the main event. And which I didn't talk about with you, because there's no way we will ever, ever get to this. But how the main event works is after you've completed the puzzle number seven you are going to need to start all over again. But the rule states that what you've unlocked in the seventh one is a, like a torch. This, this little guy here is a torch. And you're going to need to light all of the lampposts in all of these, starting going from start to finish in one full game. And so you have to hit every single torch and get through each and every one of them. And if you can do so, you'll have to write them down. There's a little little, little lamp post here and they'll show you as you can cross them off. If you don't cross them off, you lose. And so it becomes kind of a battle of wills to try and get through these mazes uh, that get exponentially more and more and more difficult. Uh, what do you think about the game? <laughs> it's it's fun, but it's it's pretty hard. Mazes and puzzles are not my forte so it's kind of hard for me but i still have a good time doing it and you can like do this on your own time and like take your time and just complete it by yourself you don't have to or you can get help from other people like i did <laughs> i don't think you necessarily have to play alone you can work together yeah. um i would normally say for games like these that you can play them anywhere but in this case only kind of because the way you're doing it is you're holding this and you have to use your pan and you're moving you know it'd be more challenging you probably want to rather play on a flat playing surface so that way you can kind of unfold and fold things as you see fit but i guess if you're just looking at it uh, and and recognizing the path that you're following you could do so as long as you just simply mark uh the objectives that you complete on the back here and additionally marking or, or, or recognizing the different objectives that you have here. Uh, but yes, this, I'm not a good puzzler, obviously. If I can't even get through half of this game, it's going to be a challenge for those of you who are not good puzzlers like, like myself. That being said, though, if you want a challenge, if you want something that's going to take up some time, you're, you're going to like this game, I think. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my wife loves these type of games. If she was sitting here reviewing it with us, she'd probably have a different take on it. She'd be like, this is great. And then, you, know, you have all these like different things and factors that you would take into consideration for like um, spatial reasoning and like that kind of thing. But uh, when you suck at it like we do, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a different matter entirely. We're like left feeling with a sense of hopelessness as we're going through this maze, <laughs> feeling like a rat without finding any cheese, yeah, uh, always like... going back and forth to the same different areas. Uh, this game can be very frustrating. Uh, if you're not a mazer or a puzzler, you're going to probably detest this game after you get to about round three. Uh, round three is going to basically turn you off from mazes altogether for the rest of your life. That being said, though, uh, it's... Difficulty in challenge wise kind of makes you want to keep doing it, which means you can spend an hour and a half going through one of these booklets, just moving your eyes around a maze until you find the correct answer. Because for those of you who play like video games, the people who like like the 100% games, you know what that is when you 100% a game? You complete the whole thing. Not just complete the game, but I mean complete everything. You have to get every card. You have to find every person to add to your party. You have to get every spell. It's like trying to come 100% complete a... Uh, Elden Ring, right? Where you need every spell, every ending, every yeah. boss. Yeah, I feel that with some games, I'm like that. 
Yeah, I mean, this has that potential uh, that you can 100% it. And for those people who like that and enjoy puzzlers, this is going to be an easy pickup. It fits in this tiny little box. Uh, it comes with seven different mazes and a way to play through them all. And then if that hasn't sold you already, it'll come with five different rule books and five different languages. Uh, that being said, you won't really need any of these or this once you understand how to play once and you can teach people in any language because this is completely language independent, which is also nice. Anybody can play this game, even by me just like, I don't know, hand signaling how it kind of works or showing them, they'll figure it out as well, which is nice. I, I really do appreciate that. And the fact that they included all the different languages is nice. It can all be played in the same box here. It, won't, it even has all different languages on the back of the box here as well. So, Labyrinthos, is this a game you'd play again? Um, well, I gave up after like five minutes. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd play it again, to be honest. This is not... <laughs> You, you 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 gave up, but then you worked. When but you then, came back and worked cooperatively, you yes. played the whole thing. You went through the whole thing with her. That's true. So maybe I'll play it again with other people that can guide do most you. of the work. It's kind of like escape games for us then. Like we'll play. It's not. <laughs> I'll we don't, watch you do it. It's not that we don't like it. We're just not good at it, right? Um, but there are, is a huge audience for this game. I, I personally would go through uh, the fourth and fifth one and try them once I am able to finish the third one. <laughs> Uh, but it's just so hard, and I'm not very good. I know. Uh, and it just feels like I'm a failure when I try and complete the puzzles. There's a lot of game in here. You're going to have a lot of fun playing this because you're going to have a lot of time to go through it. That being said, it's literally just pieces of paper and a piece of wood. Um, and so if the pri price point is right for you, and uh, you like puzzle games and maze games like I did when I was a younger, uh, a younger version of the Unfiltered Gamer, then... Uh, this is going to be for you. Uh, personally, I have a little bit of nostalgia when I think about this, or when I started playing this game, and it did make, make me feel good, remembering all those terrible mazes I made as a kid. I had a huge book, a huge, huge book of mazes, like probably like 50 or 60, and they lasted like four or five pages, and it, it was, uh, I, I also used this, like a, a pencil without a, you know, so people could play it over and over again, because I knew they would never solve it on the full, first try. So uh, this was a design concept uh, stolen from me when I was like six years old. Uh, yes, <laughs> whoever figured it out, whoever came in, maybe it was one of my classmates. Yeah. It was one of my classmates. The ones you showed the maze to. <gasps> I knew it. Let me see. Um, no, these names don't seem familiar. Pablo, <laughs> Cis okay, I'm, I'm, I would butcher these names. But regardless, well done. These are excellent little games. The artwork is solid. Um, the usable paper is nice as well. It unfolds. It feels like you're going through different, like a uh, maze. You feel like you're going through a different area each and every time. It's really easy to know where you can go and where you can't go. Uh, yes, Labyrinthos is a solid recommendation for me, but I suck at it and I'll probably never ever complete it in my life. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Review. If you're interested in checking out more videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and... What do you think's next? What is, what's next to the button? The, the button? Notification? It's a spicy bell notification button. It's a little bell button next to it. Hit that button. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog post giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. We have reviews, written reviews for games like these, but not these, so you can see other game reviews uh, not written by me. So if you want somebody else's opinion on a game, that might be a good place to go. You can also join our live stream every Sunday at... 6.30. And we're gonna go ahead and play it uh, on Facebook and on Twitch, and then on the next Monday we post it on YouTube. It's PST time, we're up here in California, just FYI. It's pretty much all I got for you. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to maze scaping with you next time. I say next time. Next time. With your finger. Next time.